everyone, it's Brett here with The Tuning School, and on this episode of Tech Tips, we're going to be talking about some knock. And so this is a vehicle um, that our guy here, Chase, was working on, uh, and he reached out to me uh, because it was having some knock. And so I started jogging down some stuff for him, and he eventually found the problem and solution uh, to this vehicle. And as you can see, We've got really aggressive bouts of knock retard in this scan. Um, this is upwards of 10 degrees, um, and it gets even worse in certain oh, certain places. Um, for example, here is pretty bad, and sometimes it's at uh, light throttle. You can see this is pretty heavy throttle here, and, and the customer's main complaint with this Trailblazer was the fact that uh, it had a hesitation. Obviously, the hesitation is going to be caused by the fact that he has 14 degrees of knock retard, which is giving him negative 9 degrees of spark advance. Um, so the vehicle obviously was not driving well at all. It was performing very poorly. So when Chase reached out to me, um, I started to go through some of the basics of how we would kind of figure out what is going on with this condition. And so to kind of start things off, um, the first thing we look at is environmental factors. So we're looking at things like engine coolant temp and then take care of temper. Neither of these excessively hot. And in this particular case, they're not 212 and 111. 111 is not the coolest, but for a truck that's driving on the road with the hood closed, this is pretty normal uh, as a rule of thumb. We're going to say anything about 30 degrees above ambient is going to be a normal operating condition. Uh, and I suspect on this particular day, I don't believe they had ambient temp in here. Oh, actually they do. As you can see, it's 82 degrees. And so you're right in the ballpark of 30 degrees when you're looking at 111 degrees of intake air temp. And so that's something that you're going to want to look at. Um, now, the next thing you're going to look at is your uh, air fuel ratio, which you can't necessarily look at. Um, due to the fact we don't have a wide band, but I can look at my neuroband, no two sensors, and I can see because they're oscillating, that is at least near 14.7, and even here, where there's 10 degrees of knock retard, they're hanging up very high, which means we're richer than 14.7 in this particular spot. And this is just a park throttle cruising zone, and so that should be fine. Uh, if these O2 sensors were just hanging out in the very bottom of the range, that would mean uh, that is leaner than 14.7, and that could possibly be an issue. Now, the other side of this is timing. Is there for some reason excessive amounts, excessive amounts of timing? And um, what you're going uh, to find with this particular application, we're dealing with a mostly stock truck. Um, and so the stock timing values, which is what was being run, should have no issue. I believe it was just like an intake, cold air intake and, a, and um, some exhaust, um, not even headers. I believe it was just like a cab back exhaust. And so that's something for you to look at as well. Um, now, at this point, we're starting to become suspected that obviously this is false knock. I'm not seeing any real reason inside the data for this knock to be real. Now, false knock can be caused by excessive engine noise. So if you've got, you know, different uh, cam, lifters, push rods, rocker arms, valve springs, that stuff can cause extra noise to create the, this false knock condition. However, this is very aggressive, and this is not normally a condition we're going to see uh, in such a large quantity uh, as the one that we're looking at here. And so there's some other environmental factors we can take into consideration, one being carbon buildup. Um, is this engine older? Um, maybe the carbon buildup is causing the knock and it could use an induction cleaning. Um, the reality is, again, this is still really aggressive knock patterns to just be caused by carbon buildup. And so uh, and typically carbon buildup is going to be a lot less consistent in the way that it's knocking where this is relatively consistent. Um, another great environmental factor or physical factor to look at is spark plug heat range. So it's the wrong heat range plug in the truck. This being a mostly stock truck that shouldn't have a very big bearance, but it's something to look at as well. And then lastly is the physical setup of the suspension, suspension chassis, motor mounts, and wheels and tires. All of that stuff can cause excessive noise that can cause this as well. And when I was walking through this with Chase, when I brought up the motor mounts, it was something he looked into, and this truck had bad motor mounts. So the stock motor mounts were just blown out. The engine is rattling around inside the engine bay and causing this condition and this really poor uh, hesitation that this particular person was experiencing. And so uh, this is a great example of sometimes you've got to get out from behind the laptop. Uh, it's not so much about what you see in the data or what you can do in the tune, but there's a physical condition with the vehicle that is going to be causing an issue. And so hopefully this helps you guys when it comes to diagnosing some knock problems at home on your own.